Hi everybody, my name is Yvonne and I am a 2022 PharmD candidate. I will be talking about Eliquis, also known as Apixaban. To begin, we will go over some main patient counseling points. Eliquis is a prescription medication used to reduce the risk of clot formation. Be sure to advise your doctor that you are taking Eliquis before an elective surgery or invasive procedure. Do not stop taking Eliquis without talking to your doctor, as stopping Eliquis may increase your risk of having a stroke. Some of the more common side effects may include nausea, confusion, anemia, or low number of red blood cells, syncope, or fainting, or bleeding. Some of the more serious side effects include unexpected bleeding or bleeding that lasts a long time, such as unusual bleeding from the gums, nosebleeds that happen often, or menstrual or vaginal bleeding that is heavier than normal, severe bleeding or bleeding that you cannot control, red, pink, or brown urine, red or black tarry stools, coughing or vomiting blood, unexpected pain, swelling, or joint pain, or feeling dizzy or weak. If you notice any of these side effects, be sure to contact your doctor right away. We will now be doing an overview of Eliquis. Eliquis is a direct oral anticoagulant, or some people like to refer to as a DOAC for short. It is also a direct factor 10A inhibitor. Eliquis can be used for non-valvular atrial fibrillation, for stroke and systemic embolism prophylaxis to reduce the risk of stroke and blood clots in people who have atrial fibrillation, for deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism treatment, to treat the blood clots in the veins of your legs or lungs and to reduce the risk of them occurring again, for deep venous thrombosis prophylaxis and pulmonary embolism prophylaxis in patients undergoing knee or hip replacement surgery. This is to reduce the risk of forming a blood clot in the legs and lungs of people who have just had hip or knee replacement surgery. It is also used off-label for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia for the treatment and prophylaxis. Mechanism of action. Apixaban, or Eliquis, is a reversible and selective active site inhibitor of free and clot-bound factor 10A, resulting in decreased thrombin generation and thrombus formation. It does not require antithrombin-3 for antithrombotic activity. With the inhibition of factor 10A, it also inhibits prothrombinase activity, decreasing thrombin generation and the development of a thrombus. Although apixaban or Eliquis has no direct effect on platelet aggregation, it does indirectly inhibit platelet aggregation induced by thrombin. Eliquis is only available as tablets, either alone or in a tablet therapy pack. For the individual tablets, it comes in 2.5 and 5 milligrams. As for the therapy pack, for the DVT or PE starter pack, it comes in 5 milligrams. There are also no generic equivalents available in the U.S. as of now. Dose recommendations. For non-valvular atrial fibrillation, for the treatment and secondary prophylaxis, 5 mg orally twice daily is recommended. Following an ischemic stroke or transient ischemic attack, initiation of therapy within 14 days is reasonable, but initiation may be delayed beyond 14 days in the presence of a high risk for hemorrhagic conversion. For deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism treatment and secondary prophylaxis, the dose recommendations are the same, which for the treatment, it's 10 mg orally twice daily for first seven days, and then 5 mg orally twice daily thereafter. For the secondary prophylaxis, it's 2.5 mg orally twice daily for a minimum of six months. With total hip and knee surgery for clot prevention, the dosing is the same at 2.5 mg orally twice daily, beginning 12 to 24 hours after surgery. However, the duration that's after the surgery is 35 days for total hip surgery and 12 days for total knee surgery. For renal impairment dose adjustments in non-valvular atrial fibrillation, with a serum creatinine less than 1.5, no dose adjustment is required unless they are greater than or equal to 80 years of age and have a body weight less than or equal to 60 kilograms then the dose recommendation would be 2.5 milligrams twice daily. 
with a serum creatinine greater than or equal to 1.5 and either they are greater than or equal to 80 years of age or have a body weight less than or equal to 60 kilograms, then you would do the 2.5 milligrams twice daily recommendation. For severe or end-stage kidney disease not requiring dialysis, which is a CRCL from 15 to 29 milliliters per minute, then you would also do the 2.5 milligrams twice daily recommendation. In deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, for the treatment, secondary prophylaxis or total hip or knee surgery prophylaxis, no dose adjustment is needed. For hepatic impairment dose adjustments, for mild child pew class A, no dose adjustment is needed. For moderate child pew class B, no dose adjustment is needed, but be sure to use it with caution. Severe child pew class C, use is not recommended as Eliquis has not been studied in patients with severe hepatic disease. Precautions and contraindications. With the Beers criteria, you want to avoid use in elderly patients with a CRCL less than 25 milliliters per minute due to an increased risk of bleeding. The use of Eliquis in patients with prosthetic heart valves has not been studied and the use in this population is also not recommended. Again, Eliquis has not been studied and use is not recommended in patients with severe hepatic disease. The concomitant use of other drugs that affect hemostasis, for example, aspirin and other antiplatelet drugs, other anticoagulants, heparin, thrombolytic agents, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may increase the risk of bleeding. You want to avoid the abrupt discontinuation of Eliquis in the absence of adequate alternative anticoagulation because discontinuing Eliquis puts the patient at an increased risk of thrombotic events. For contraindications, you don't want to use it in patients that have active pathological bleeding or have a severe hypersensitivity to Eliquis. You want to be sure to monitor the patient's CBC complete blood count APTT, activated partial thromboplastin time, PT, prothrombin time, serum creatinine, and liver function tests prior to initiation when clinically indicated and at least annually. Routine coagulation testing is not required or necessary for direct oral anticoagulants. There are currently no FDA-approved assays or calibration reagents available. Here are my references, and thank you for listening to my presentation.